Okay, so let's uh, create ourselves a new condition for rules. This will be interesting. Uh, since uh, this might be the first time you create a condition for rules, you probably want to see how the existing conditions look. So let's go and look at that. Workflow, rules, rules, develop info, and the conditions here. <clears throat> we obviously have 22 of them, and they look like this. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, for example, this uh, data is empty. Ah, or list contains. Let's look at list contains. That's kind of interesting right now. Um, because that's kind of similar to what we want to do. It has a label. It has parameters, two of them. One is called list. And it has type label restriction. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, item uh, that is... Uh, type unknown that's a special type of uh, uh, special type of uh, data that uh, accepts any type of data that's kind of interesting uh, callbacks hmm. we won't be using these callbacks okay but uh, it seems that we want to have something with a label and parameters that go in and it well this one uses a base which is the callback function uh, for the uh, for the condition, if you don't have a base set, you will it will instead use the name of the condition, the machine name of the condition. Okay, so let's go implement our own uh, uh, our own condition then. And this is well again not obvious which function you should use to add a new condition. We could use hook rules condition info alter, but we will not be altering any of the existing conditions we could just use uh, um, hook rules condition info instead so let's go ahead and do this and again uh, well um, uh, last exercise we worked in the rules coding dot modules file and it would work to do that uh, now as well but um, if we put our stuff in the rules coding uh, dot rules dot include file instead the uh, file, uh, well, the code will only be loaded when rules is needed, which saves us some, some time in performance. So let's do that. Okay, let's uh, have here function rules coding, what was it? Rules condition info. Let's use that one. And this one takes no input data, this just declares new uh, conditions to rules. So let's declare a condition. Condition equals array something here. And when I do this, I immediately want to do this return condition because every once in a while I forget this, and I then I have uh, it takes some time before I can uh, fi find what mistake I did. So I'm doing this right now. Uh, okay. Condition. Let's give this a name. Let's uh, prefix it with a module name. That's always good. Rules coding. Um, and what we want to do is to see if one word, uh, well, is if any of a list of words is included in a uh, in a long text. So let's see um, any. Let's have condition first, so we can see rules coding condition. This is a rules coding thing. Condition uh, any word in text that might be a, well a long name, but it it'll work. And then we create an array to describe this, just as we have here with the conditions. We have we're adding a new entry here. We'll get something called rules rules coding condition any word in text will appear here and then the content of that will look kind of similar to this so let's see if we can do that uh, we'll have a label label uh, again use the t function uh, any of words uh, exists in long text long string long text is good Then we have parameters. This is the this is the well trick thing here. This is the most important thing when it comes to um, conditions. This de um, 
is both the input to the condition and also in some sense the configuration of it. So let's see here. Parameter. And this is an array of parameters because we can have more than one. And we can call them whatever we like. It seems that we should use some kind of special words here because we have list and item and that sounds kind of strange. But you can pick any words you like. So let's have a list of words, um, which we in turn should describe with an array, as it's done here. Let's see, this list is described with a type, label, and in this uh, case also restriction. Let's skip that for now. Type and label is, it, is enough. Type. The list of words should have a special data type, and that should be what we used before, the list of text. So anything that is a list of text could be used as a parameter here for the list of words. Uh, label. Um, word, list of words to search for. That's kind of nice. Now what did I do wrong? I missed the comma here. Here's the first parameter, the list of words. Let's uh, add another parameter. I'm just going to copy this. Uh, text. Uh, well, let's call it haystack. Haystack. Uh, we could have a list of needles instead, in, uh, instead of a list of words, but let's let's not have that. The haystack is just a text, long text. And the label is uh, text to search in, something like that. Okay, and then we're almost done. We have the label, we have the parameters. These are the important things, but we should add some something else here, like the group, for example. So let's do that. And I think we are about here. Group. rules coding this will be the um, uh, this will be the well how how the the conditions are grouped together uh, and there we're almost done what we need now is a function with this name that takes two parameters and returns true or false uh, depending on if any of these words appear in this haystack so let's do that very quickly. Function there, and I'm going to call it list of words and haystack. Let's also add some commenting here. I forgot that in the previous screencast. Sorry about that. Implement hook rules condition info. And this is a condition called back to check if any of list that words appear in a long text. Sweet. Okay, so I'm going to do this um, uh, quickly. You can stop here and do this for yourself if you want to and uh, figure it uh, out. You're probably more familiar with PHP than I am. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to do this anyway, step by step. So I'm going to start by looping through all these words, checking one by one if any of them uh, appear in the haystack. So I'm going to do a for each, for each list of words as word, if, and then I'm going to do a string, uh, a case insensitive search. Uh, Haystack search for word. Okay, if the word appears in the haystack, return true. Because then, um, uh, then the word appears here, and we can break and return true because uh, we know that the condition is true. 
However, if we go through all this, uh, all these loops, uh, all uh, all the words, and we don't find the word, uh, any of the word match, then we should return false because then it's uh, not found, not present. If we got this far, there is no well, none word listed words are present in the long text. Search for the listed words one by one. That might be a quicker way of doing this, but this this is fair enough. So we have something returning either true or false, depending on some conditions that we set up, some logic. And uh, yes, that's it. We have now created a new condition that is available for rules to use. Um, yeah. See you in the next exercise. Then we're going to work a little bit more with this uh, uh, with this uh, condition here. See you. Bye.